hereby call the uh, 7 o'clock special school committee to order. We are at the Dr. William H. Arnone Theater, 135 Belmont Street here in Brockton, 02301. It is the 27th day of February, 2024, 7 o'clock. I do need to read the following into the record. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Comcast Channel 8 and also the 1071 HD version and online via the following link, which is www.youtube.com uh, slash the Brockton Channels. I would ask that we please stand and salute the American flag and please uh, remain standing, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like us to take a moment of silence. The city of Brockton lost uh, Anthony Zioli. Tony Zioli was the city clerk for 30 years here in the city of Brockton at City Hall. He passed away after a tough battle. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family that are surviving. Uh, his wake is tomorrow at Conley, and then on Friday, the funeral, I believe it's at Edith Stein. So if we could just take a moment for Mr. Zioli, please. May he rest in peace. Thank you. I would like to establish a quorum. I do want the uh, minutes to reflect that Tim Sullivan is unable to join us today. He tried to uh, come on via Zoom, but uh, the Little Theater has capacity for Zoom, but unfortunately the Unknown Theater does not have capacity for Zoom. So Mr. Sullivan will not be joining us this evening. Uh, establish a quorum, please. Mr. Sullivan. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Ehlers. Here. Mr. Gomes. Here. Ms. Oliver. Here. Mr. Rodriguez. Here. Ms. Azak. Here. I'm here. We have established a uh, quorum. Uh, we do have a lengthy agenda tonight. We have a lengthy amount of people, and I'm thankful for the people that signed up. I also want to, on behalf of the school, school committee, thank everybody that arrived at Brockton High yesterday morning. Uh, myself and my chief of staff, Sidney Merrill, there about 6.55. Uh, the place was packed on Forest Ave. It was to show support as a community to the students and the staff. So there was a, a real collaborative approach with uh, nonprofits, with pastors, with civic organizations, but also with mom and dads and teachers. Uh, Principal McCaskill, you were out there. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, but again, that's what the city of Brockton needs, and we will continue to do that. At this time, the hearing of visitors is agenda item four. If you're new to this, uh, you have three minutes to speak. You please come up to the podium. This is being televised tonight, uh, and after three minutes, we need to go on to the next. It looks like we have uh, 16 people that have signed up this evening. So uh, we will start first with Stacy McDonald, please. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor Sullivan, Dr. Cobb, school committee members. Uh, my name is Stacy McDonald, and I'm the union president for the Brockton Educational Support uh, Professional Association, BESPA. I wanted to say one thing before I speak um, about what's going on and the, the ongoing concerns. I want to publicly thank Principal McCaskill. One of my members had a serious incident the week prior to vacation. He met with my member and immediately addressed the situation. So hats off to him. He's exactly what the high school needs, and we needed him for a long time. <laughs> However, here we are again with another special school committee meeting. These concerns were brought to, your, uh, to the school committee 112 days ago in November. My question to all of you and I believe, Joyce, uh, you just mentioned that um, it's hard to implement a policy now in March. Well, why was there no policies implemented in November when we came to you? Um, for the past 103 days prior to asking for help from the National Guard on February 9th, what policies and procedures have you put in place to protect our students and staff at BCF, BHS? Um, I think I know the answer, and that's none. Uh, as we all heard yesterday, the National Guard is not coming. So what? So what? Th so with that being said, tonight, will tonight finally be the night that you share with all of us what policies and procedures that are going to be put in place immediately, immediately, starting tomorrow, to protect the staff and students at BHS? Thank you. Uh, Arthur Diaz, please. Mr. Arthur Diaz, please. Thank you for the stopwatch. Um, I'm actually going to open in a prayer for myself, if that's all right. Uh, please feel free to join me. Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless this meeting, this council, these families, these children, Lord, these police officers, 
Lord, I pray that the words that I share tonight glorify you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me in prayer. Um, I grew up here. I'm, it's been a while since I've been home. Um, but I have heard everything that's been going on. Uh, I got a lot of friends and family. I love a lot of people in the city still. Um, and what I wanted to say is that no, in my opinion, despite the clamors for policy and National Guard and rules and dress codes and phones, none of that's going to change anyone's heart. And I don't think Brockton has a policy problem or a police problem or a policy problem, dress problem. I don't think it's any of those things. I think it's a problem of the heart. And one thing I can tell you, I'm going to use the whole three minutes. Um, one thing I can tell you is that coming to saving faith in Jesus Christ will change your heart. Now, I'm surprising a lot of people. There's people in here who have known me since I was 13. So they're probably shocked to see this version of me. And that's a good thing because Christ offers redemption. Christ offers a new version of you. And without him changing our hearts, no policy you bring in, no amount of soldiers, no amount of dress code or legal action is going to change anything that happens with these kids, with these families, with the everybody's watching, you know. And if we have a chance here as a city, in my opinion, that if we put God first, we're not afraid of it. We just stood up, a hundred and something people stood up and said, one nation under God, all of us out loud. We're not afraid of it. So what I'd like to offer, again, like I said, I haven't been here in a while, but I'm willing to share this gospel, share this good news, every chance you give me, be it with the students, with the staff, with the families, because Christ is going to change your heart. And unless he changes our hearts, nothing in this city is going to change or any city is going to change. And it, you can extrapolate that out. And I'm going to close in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for speaking through me. Thank you for redemption and salvation. We pray these words. Find this committee well. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Uh, Lori Mason, please. Good evening, everyone. This is actually, this actually was sent to me from my daughter, Christina Mason, a BHS graduate of 2013. I am here at yet another committee meeting regarding the violence within the walls of Brockton High School. How embarrassing it, it, it must be to regard Brockton as the city of champions when our future leaders are being neglected of a proper education, when our city is making headlines due to violent outbursts of teenagers under your authority. This is a question of your leadership and discipline, not the children. I glanced through the student handbook on page 18. Underneath core values, it reads, provides a safe, respectful, responsive, and inclusive learning environment that promotes physical, emotional, social, and mental wellness. The Excuse me, you're taking my time. The recent headlines are not reflective of that. You have children afraid to walk these halls every day. Sending in the National Guard will not alleviate their fears. Taking away their phones will not eliminate their stressors. If you treat every student like a criminal, you strip them of their dignity and yourself, creating, from creating a positive environment with mutual respect. If you take away their means of communication in a hostile environment, it will increase their fearfulness you must command respect and lead by example. These teenagers know better than to lay their hands on one another along their superiors. This discussion should never have what the heck? This 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 discussion should never have had to reach us or the news. 
An assembly with these students needs to be and should have already been held, informing them of your zero tolerance policy toward violence. Assault is an illegal act and therefore deserves legal consequences. Command respect, reassert your authority, the rest will follow. Thank you. Okay, I want to start off by saying good evening, all members of the school committee, and hello. My name is Jamie Hodges, and I'm a product of the Brockton Public School System, graduating from Brockton High School in 2012, and currently pursuing a PhD in education at Liberty University. I'm dedicated to being a community leader who values accountability. Reflecting on the recent events where certain committee members criticized the school system, I'm reminded of my own experiences from Whitman to West to Brockton High. I formed lasting friendships and valuable relationships during that time. It is concerning that a request was made to deploy the National Guard without prior collaboration with school officials, school and city officials. This action has alter, unfortunately portrayed our city in a negative light, affecting not only our reputation, but also potential investments. During a recent gathering in support of Brockton High students, it was disappointing to only see the mayor and school committee chair, Robert F. Sullivan, in attendance. His presence demonstrated care and support for the students. To the committee members who sought National Guard intervention, I have two questions. One, did you consult with Principal McCaskill to understand the efforts being made to address the issues? And two, were all alternative solutions explored before considering the extreme measure of involving the National Guard? Governor Haley has declined the National Guard deployment and instead offered a grant to audit safety concerns at Brockton High. It is crucial for all parties all involved parties to collaborate and prioritize the well-being of students, teachers, staff, and faculty. Let us work together towards a solution that benefits everyone and transcends personal egos and ignorance. To the teachers, students, faculty, and staff, I see you, I hear you, and I will support you 100%. Thank you. It, Isabella Kadecki. My name is Isabella Katsky, okay. and I am a leader with uh, Brockton Interfaith Community and a sophomore at BHS. Brockton Interfaith Community, or BIC, is a social justice organization focused on racial and economic justice in Brockton. We have been serving this city since 1990. We have been advocating for education justice in various forms since 2016, and our youth leaders have been actively involved in addressing systemic issues in Brockton schools since 2021. It is time to heed the voices of youth, parents, community members, and leaders who have long called for genuine solutions. You lack answers. It's crucial to listen, collaborate, and act with the community rather, imposing, rather than imposing flawed strategies like involving the National Guard or increasing suspensions. These approaches perpetuate harmful system, systems and fail to prioritize students. The mismanagement of funds has left students with, without enough teachers or counselors, creating an unsafe environment for everyone. It is time to embrace community-driven solutions. We deserve a safe school environment free from systemic violence and milita militarization. We support our educators' need for a collaborative work environment. Immigrant families deserve schools free from fear of military presence. Community members stand ready to support, yet their efforts have been disregarded. Collaboration between schools and community organizations, including our own youth-led team, has been successful in the past, but is being currently neglected. It's time to dismantle barriers and follow the community's lead. For those seeking to engage, look for us in big shirts for guidance. 
Additionally, a community-led town hall meeting is forthcoming, which we are not organizing, but endorse and encourage participation in. Stay tuned for details, and feel free to reach out to us for more information. Thank you. Cynthia Hodges, please. Cynthia Hodges. say good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Cynthia Hodges and I'm a small, a small business owner here in Brockton and I am a proud parent of three alumni students that graduated from Brockton High School. Um, I feel that we need lots of support from everyone but not the National Guard. I think we should show the teachers, the staff, the principal and everyone we are there for support. Support the principal. Give them a chance to figure it out. I was talking to a parent that a son ha is, is playing on the basketball team here in Brockton. And he was MVP last week. She didn't want to be, you know, um, recognized here. She is here tonight. And her son got an MVP ring. Also, she was talking about that she want to send her son to the boarding school in Connecticut because of the chaos that is going on here in Brockton. We're here to empower the kids. Don't put a scare in the parents with this type of impactment. It's an impactment on economic development. Who wants to, if you want to have a business, knowing that you have to activate the National Guards with the school, no one want to have their business here. Cause I'm going to leave this stop. Cause if you, if your pencil was that smart, you have, you would have put it to use before it all came down to this. Thank you. Nicole Gatling, please. Nicole Gatling. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, as you know, I'm Nicole Gatling. I'm um, a 23-year resident of Ward 1, the mother of a son who graduated from Brockton Public Schools. Um, I also prided myself, and who now attends Curry College, I prided myself in being involved in Brockton Public and still remain involved any way I can. So I want to let you all know that I support the teachers, staff, and students and our community in Brockton. I have major questions when it came to what was executed as far as going to the national level of going on Fox News. I was in my house serious because I never knew of any educators that would rely on a National Guard in an educational facility. This is not a prison. You're raising children. You're, we're raising leaders. People that are going to be able to take care of us when they get older, when, when we get older, which we are getting. So, and I guess my problem is, is how did we get to this point? Did we reach out to our community, which the board is elected to do? That's first off. You all were supposed to communicate with us. And if you didn't, why? And if you did, please let me know because I like to see the minutes. Also, too, I got to admit, during the, we have a population of minorities, a large population of minorities, with a 60%, it was reported in Channel 5 of a minority population. During Black History Month, we're going to deploy the National Guard. Only time I see the National Guard was during the Boston boycotts. That's not what the National Guard is for. So if we don't know, let's deal with the people that we hired to know. At this time, I never heard from the superintendent, who usually takes the lead, and I'm not judging you at all. I'm not even throwing stones. I would have liked to have heard from you instead of the school committee members, because that's who we pay as educators to know. We pay you good salaries. So we know that you have the skill set to execute a plan and so I guess I'm saying this, and not only that, I can remember when my son was attending school, any issue that came up, Mike Thomas was first and foremost in front and center. So 
and he would never say anything about a National Guard. And the reason being is because he understands the history of the community in which he's representing. So I guess I, I do have a lot of questions, and I know I only got 20 more minutes, I mean 20 more seconds. <laughs> I'm interested in understanding what the safety policies and plans that, um, thank God Governor Haley put a stop to that. Um, I'm interested in understanding what are the safety precautions that we're putting in place to make sure that our students and staff and teachers are feeling comfortable. And what can we do as a community to help you? You have a lot of educated Rasan Hall, please. Rasan Hall, please. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Rasan Hall. I'm the president and CEO of the Urban League of Eastern Massachusetts. I'm also a proud Brockton resident um, and one of the organizers of uh, Monday's standout to support our kids, our faculty, staff, and community. Political stunts are powerful. Political stunts have consequences. We've heard about some of those consequences about the narrative that is being created about the blackest city in Massachusetts. We have felt the impact of those consequences with images of our children being spread all across the nation as violent and uncontrollable. But that's not who Brockton is. And instead of using political stunts to create narratives about who we are as a community, a better approach would have been to engage the community because a call from a few individuals to a few of their networks got at least 60, 70, 80 people to stand out at 6.30 on a Monday morning. That says something about the power and the belief and the values that are inherent in this community. The time for political stunts is over. And so for those of you all who are here who have concerns about our students, about our faculty, about our staff, about the image and reputation of the city of Brockton, and who refuse to be shamed for not coming to prior school committee meetings, who refuse to be shamed for not showing up at an event, but are here now, I say to you there are more opportunities to continue to get engaged. Principal McCaskill is open to working with the community. There are a lot of ways to support all of the institutions and grassroots organizations and programs in our community that serve our kids every day. We've got Rose Conservatory, Sabura, so many other programs in our community that are working with and serving our children. Let's come together and leverage that. Let's show up, let's volunteer, let's be mentors, and let's refute that terrible narrative that is being perpetuated about our school and about our community. And so if you want to get involved, the NAACP and the Urban League of Eastern Massachusetts and several other organizations in our community are in conversation and are hosting a community-led and community-based town hall meeting on March 12th. Tuesday, March 12th at 6.30 at Messiah Baptist Church to look at community solutions that go beyond political stunts and consequential narratives. Jamal Gooding, please. Mr. Jamal Gooding. Sounds really tall. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jamal Gooding. I am the executive director and founder of PAC, People Affecting Community Change. This is an organization born here in the city of Brockton that had to change its mission statement many times as we found ourselves adjusting to the many needs of the populations that we serve. 
Before I go any further, I'm going to ask Principal McGuire, can you please stand up for a moment? McCaskin. McCaskin, excuse me. McCaskin. Let's give him a warm round of applause. If the narrative has been that Brockton High is bad, that people don't feel safe, that there is no access, then we have to acknowledge that the, the, the plight that this man and his staff has had to go up against daily, many things we as parents, service providers, and officials don't even know that happen on the day-to-day -day basis inside of that high school. One of the things I'm gonna ask us to think about tonight, and I'm asking the school committee directly, to take a 21st century approach when dealing with our young adults. We are using old school, outdated methods to communicate and engage with young adults who have expressed to myself, my staff, and me, parents and pastors in this city, that they do not feel accepted, that they do not feel included, and that they don't feel like they have anyone that they can go to or to trust. Our students have spoken. We did a contest with young adults two years ago. Two years ago. It was called Factor Cap. And out of 543 youth, the question was, Brockton does not care about its youth, cap or fact. There was a resounding 543 individuals that voted and said that they don't believe that Brockton cares about their youth. I am here tonight to offer a solution, an alternative. I've heard from many of you tonight saying that our students don't feel safe. The National Guard was coming. What are you going to do? We haven't heard the school committee. I'm saying to you right now, I am prepared. My organization and partners is prepared to go into Brockton High School tomorrow with over 50 men that will walk the halls, walk the parking lot, provide security, <laughs> restore public safety, and then engage with teachers and faculty alike to identify those young adults who seem to be underperforming so we can address the violence and it rusted right then and there. The, I, absolutely, I got it, I got it. So one, the, here's the last thing, I got one minute. There's money right now in the student activity fund. Right now, $4 million. Right now, in a student activity fund that is shared with the high school and the mayor's office. We will work for free until you can pay us, but we will work for free. <laughs> Gary Keith, please. Gary Keith. Hi, good evening. And have me, uh, thank you for having me here tonight, and thank everyone for coming. Um, I just have a couple of ideas that I wanted to run past you um, that I brought up before, before this body, and it seemed to have fell, you know, I don't know where it fell, but it didn't go anywhere. Um, so I'm going to bring it up again. But first I want to say, first of all, I'm Gary Keith. I'm a 35-year resident of Brockton, and I am rooted in the community. I try to get out there as much as I can to do what I can. First of all, a few years ago, Brockton High School was the model school for the nation. What happened? The only thing that changed were the elected officials. Okay, and I hear people saying we need to enforce the policies. That's damn right we do. Okay, they, they, for some reason, somewhere, we dropped the ball on that, which is why we went from top to bottom. And believe it or not, I know people all around, around the country, and it's embarrassing that my phone keeps ringing from people saying, what the hell is going on in Brockton? Do something, please, because I'm tired of answering my phone. <laughs> Two things I want to say. One, I was involved with uh, school desegregation in, in uh, Boston in 1975 when it first started under Judge Arthur Garrity. And I went to High Park High School. We had riots every day. You think these fights that these kids are having now are bad? We had full-blown riots, okay? And some of the things that they did were they used maglocks on the doors, which I brought up before, before this body. 
Now, mag locks, if anyone knows, and I'm sure the police do, can withstand 3,000 pounds, whatever you want to do, which will keep these kids from opening up a door to let in uh, outside people to help them with any violence in the school. However, the doors can be controlled by the central office. In case of a fire, all the doors unlock. It also could help you in a, in a isolate, to isolate an active shooter if it ever came down to it, if you do the research on it. And it's, not, it's only going to cost thousands of dollars and not millions. The other thing is, like Jamal Gooding just said, I am willing to volunteer my time because one of the things we did at High Park High School was men volunteered and we swept the hallways after class, after the bell rung. And we swept it, all the traffic went one direction. We swept the hallways. And if we found any students in the hallways, we put them in the closest classroom and that's where they stayed for the next 45 minutes. These are some of the things that you need to do in here instead of being able to let these kids go whichever way they want to do. We need to come up with some order and I am willing to volunteer my time and I'm hoping that a lot of other men and women who want to do it can do the same. This is our city, let's take it back. You Thank are. you. Wanda Stewart, please. Wanda Stewart. First and foremost, I want to thank um, Rasan Hall for inviting me here um, and making sure that the community gets involved. Um, I just want to say at the last meeting, you um, had brought up and mentioned what exactly is needed to implement these policies. Well, I understand that the principal has to be politically correct, um, but what they need is more staffing. They need more, they need more. Um, because the students, we need to address the fact that the high school has become a hybrid institution where the teachers are asked to be enforced policies more and teach less. Um, in regards to the community involvement, we have to understand that, you know, there needs to be more of us. You, you wanted the National Guard to come in, and that was a great gesture. What you didn't realize is that what you really did is ignite the, the community. In the words of Senator John Lewis, you invited us to actually stir up good trouble. Yes, yes. Yes. We came, we hear, we understand that there is a problem. Um, we need to address the fact that, you know, you have lost, that representation matters. You have lost some good talent in regards to the school, especially minority black and brown teachers. Why? Because every single year, nobody, wa everybody wants job security. Nobody wants to get the notice that they will not have a job or they have to wait. Nobody wants that. They're going to these suburban communities where they're not making as much of an impact as they would in Brockton. Um, lastly, I will say to this, Channel 10, I don't know where you are, but we don't need any more of your repeats of the fights. We need you to understand that this is Brockton. We need to stand up for the kids. We need to stand up for the kids that are doing great things. We are, we are sending more children that as an inner city community to these Ivy League schools. Our theater, our, our groups, our sports, they're winning medals, they're winning, they're winning awards. We're as, as far as Abigail Adams, we're, we're passing those at alarming rates. This is Brockton. There are great kids here. And when we talk about this, there are thousands of kids at that school, and we're talking about maybe less than 10% that really need the help. And as a community, we are, we are here, and we're standing up to say that we are here as, to support you. Thank you. Julie Fairfield, please. Julie Fairfield. Hello again. Hello. Um, I first want to say, sometimes political statements are what it takes. I don't know if you would have gotten that money from Governor Healy if um, you hadn't done that. Sometimes you have to stand in the middle of a highway and block the traffic to make your message known. And no, I don't want the National Guard in my school, but I feel like I understood what was behind it. I feel like it was a cry that was like, somebody notice we need something here. Can you give us some help? I believe. Um, yeah, my daughter lives in Texas. Um, she called me and, what's going on? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna guard me. And I knew it wasn't gonna happen. I think you knew it wasn't gonna happen. 
but you got to do something. And I've had so many people tell me I was not here during the heyday of Brockton when, you know, things were low and then when I, I came in in 2015. But I just feel like people don't understand. It is not the same. We, we don't just have to deal with these incredibly <coughs> idiotic laws that have been put in place that, while I don't think have handcuffed um, administrators as much as they feel like they do, but maybe I don't know. I'm, I can read the law, but um, I just feel like maybe we can try for some kind of emergency order to override it or something because that's something that we need. The other thing is we are too big. That might have worked before, but it's not working now. And I feel like kids 14 years old, being in a high school with 19-year-olds, that something's going to give. And I don't understand why we can't have a freshman center. It's some, a, a school where we, it can be, a, we're going to teach you how to be high school students. We're, you're going to go here. You're not going to be with, you know, the little kids anymore, but we're going to teach you how to act. And I don't know. I, and I know that money's a problem, and I know that buildings are a problem. Uh, there was a mouse that ran across my floor the other day, and that's a problem. What's really sad is I wasn't even scared. I, but I think if we did do something like a freshman center, I think that would help so much. Because that, that level of, of maturity, or lack thereof, yeah, I think it would just, it would help the situation and maybe save Brockton. But I'm not mad. Thank you. Linda Texera Reyes, please. Linda Texera Reyes. Good evening. Well, thank goodness we avoided BPS POWs. I come before you today with a heavy heart to address the distressing situation at BPS. It's evident that there's a pattern of disregard for the well-being and the future of our students. It's truly disheartening to witness our children uh, being subjected to chaos and neglect with seemingly no end in sight. The mismanagement of funds the termination of successful programs all point to a systemic issue within the administration. Sudden and unwarranted cancellations of programs like the Champion City program, Girls Gold Femtor program, and others, which this committee kept talking about, um, all held great potential to unlift and empower our students, yet they were all carelessly discarded by this administration. Well, the last one. Um, you have known for some time that the students were unraveling. You watch them on all of these security cameras. You wait for them to mess up so you can add them to your political quotas to fill your prisons. We know it's mostly black and brown kids here, so who cares? Um, and Mr. Keith, I don't know where you went to answer your question. Why did the school go down? Because as black and brown populations go up, the funding goes down. Um, it's ludicrous to hear the mayor claim ignorance about this mismanagement, considering he holds the highest position in our city. As head of our community, he bears the responsibility to oversee and ensure proper allocations of all resources, especially when it comes to our children's education. This relevation only underscores the urgent need for accountability and transparency, transparency within our local government. Our students cannot afford to bear the consequences of bureaucratic incompetence any longer. Lastly, we have yet to hear from those students. We have yet to provide a real forum or opportunities for the students to have a real and meaningful conversation. The children, they are the ones who are affected. They are the ones who are also perp allegedly perpetrating these, these disturbances. As we navigate the issues at BPS, it's crucial to remember that the students themselves should have a voice and input on the decisions that affect their education and their well-being. 
We've taken the time, have we taken the time to ask them what they want, how they feel about the chaos and the neglect that they endure on a very daily basis? Do they have a say about their behaviors, about the behaviors of the peers? What do they think should be the consequences of some of these behaviors? Do they personally have fear in the school? And what are those? Do they know people who are disruptive? Why do they think that's happening? Um, the students are the ones impacted directly by the shortcomings of the city of the city. Their perspectives, experiences, and needs are essential to any efforts to address the challenges we face. It's time to listen to our students, empower them, and work with them to create a learning environment that is positive for their needs and aspirations. Drew, Drew Fontero, please. Drew Fontero. Hi, my name is Drew Fontero. Um, I lived in Brockton pretty much all my life and left when I was 17 years old to go pursue an acting career in Hollywood. Um, I would never have been successful if not for my teachers at Brockton High School, Salt Junior High School, and Huntington School. I give them thanks for everything they do. Um, it is because of Miss Oaken that I love reading with character. It's because of Miss Garvey that I love English. It's because of Miss Penny Knight and Miss Villani that I have a future in song and dance and everything like that. What you guys are hearing right now is that um, all these parents are harping and telling you guys different things um, because they're concerned. But really, the most important opinion that you guys uh, got to hear today was that young lady who was a student. And also you. Thank you. I'm glad I followed you. Because we have to ask the students what they want, what they need. ASAC, you're amazing. But putting them in orange sweaters as prisoners, they're not that. DECA is an amazing school program that creates merch and clothes for them. If they have improper clothes, we fit them in beautiful clothes that screams Brockton High School school spirit. Okay? We don't punish them for that. We try something new, something different. I wrote a 16-page document about, called the Brockton High School Initiative. It gives you guys all opportunities to change what you guys have been doing with your schools. Now, if you, real quick, Socrates once said, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Okay, you guys are talking about taking cell phones away from students, yet you guys are thinking, basically what you guys are thinking is of what you do outside of the box, but you're not thinking of what you can do with that box. These students have cell phones. They're addicted to social media. They love the likes and uh, all that sort of stuff. What about creating a program that utilizes the phone? What about them coming to school and, I don't know, when I was young, I used to have a program called, we had an app called Foursquare, and every time we got into one place, we checked in and it gave us points for checking in, incentives. What if the students had an app that worked on their phone that could create incentives for the school? Every time they walk in, they get points, incentives, prizes, things that create school spirit. Stop talking down to them. Talk with them. Ask them to come to you. They have perspectives and opinions that you guys are not hip to because we are millennials, we are olders, we are boomers. These are Gen Zs and, and Gen Alphas. They will inherit Brockton, Massachusetts. If we don't give them the things to do, things that will enrich their mind and their heart, yo, they're gonna abandon Brockton, Massachusetts. We got to create new programs. We got to create new dances, new art, art. We took art out of schools, let's bring art back. We need to give these students something, but it starts with them, not just you guys, yeah. them. Yeah. Remember that. Thank you. Thank you. John C. Williams, please, John C. Williams. Good evening, Brockton. Good evening. I'm glad I get a chance to speak tonight. <clears throat> I hear a lot of ideas. There's no policy you can make that can change what's going on. Not one. There's nothing you can institute right now that's going to change it tomorrow. 
we put in a long, you did some due diligence, Judy. You went and spoke to some teachers. And you know what they told you? We need champion city mentors. And you tried to explain to them, and they were like, oh, it's John Williams, so they didn't want to hear it, right? I hear you. So I listened to my brother Jamal speak and say he's willing to go into the school with mentors and men to patrol the hallways and stuff like that. The problem is you guys are only focused on Brockton High School because Brockton High School is the crown jewel that makes you your money. But this problem doesn't start at Brockton High School. You're not gonna go into Brockton High School, patrol the hallways, and fix it. Over 10 years ago, I had a meeting with Mike Thomas. And we developed a long-term plan. You heard some people today say it. You heard some of my former colleagues, some, some teachers come up and say Brockton High School was a model school. We were leading the way, restorative justice, everything. 10 years ago, we had a meeting. And we put together a program that spanned not only the high school, because in 2016, we had these same issues. People filming fights, and it got real bad. And I got a call, and I got asked to bring in community members, some that are here today. I see William Wells, I see my wife, Linda Texera Raids that just spoke. I see Roro Wilson right there. We had people come into the school and build relationships from kindergarten to 12th grade. The worst students in your school right now we've had since the third grade. But for some reason, political agendas in Brockton take precedence over children. Yeah. You all, you, 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 you all voted to get rid of this program that supported not only the students, we supported teachers, we supported administration. Ask how many conversations I've had with Sharon Walters, Michelle Connors, Mike Thomas, Mr. G back there. All of these teachers that y'all claim to support, we actually went in there and did it. And we started doing it for nothing, for nothing. We went in there because we care. I was that student. He was that student. Ro was that student. We're from here. We're from Brockton. We came back into the school to help out the kids so they don't go down the same path we went. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We need to get real. Get rid of your political agendas. Get rid of your personal vendettas, whatever they are. And get people that have done the work on a consistent basis for the last 10 years. We're doing the work. I don't get a pay to dime. I still got mothers calling me. And I go to their house. And I go work with those kids. I still see kids in the streets, in the supermarket. What's up with school? You walked with me during, during the campaigning. You saw how kids react to me. These are kids in the street. And I can talk. Hey, what's up with your grades? Come here. Sit down. We need kids to see people that look like their uncle, that look like their older brother, that look like their fathers, because we have missing fathers. So when we have people in the school that can adjust and adapt to these kids and talk to them and say, listen, hey, come here. You know what you need to do? You need to sit down real quick, shut up, and listen to this teacher, because she's going to give you the key to success. And if you think that ain't what it is, you can ask any teacher in here that's had an experience with our program. They'll tell you what it is. Do your due diligence and stop playing around. We've already lost a generation of kids yes. with all these games. Yes. You're talking about funding? You're asking for funding? You just had $80 million that you didn't put in your boy Chris Carney's pocket. That y'all didn't win and spend on buses. That y'all started the transportation department that's over budget every year because you weren't smart enough to see this is a transportation department. We're going to have to maintain these buses. We're going to have to sign contracts with drivers. And that con that driver contract was horrible. You did a terrible job. All of you need to be done. I know it's enough. I know you don't want to hear anymore. Yeah, do your job. Do your job. Yeah. We are back to you.
Decorum, please. We, we have another person, please. Michelle Henson, please. I will remain within my three minutes, but I'm going to be really direct to some of you. You heard that we had mentors, and you thought that, well, we have formerly incarcerated people, and they're not safe to have around our children. But you wanted to bring soldiers who don't know our kids, who don't give a damn about our kids, and you know the first child that showed out and touched up was going to get hurt, and you didn't think about that. And I did reach out to the four of you, because I was very disappointed that it was you who wanted to bring this down on black and brown children. Now, if it was a stunt to get the attention, okay, I guess I can get that now. We have everybody's attention now, and I can give you that. And what I didn't say at the beginning is I'm going to give you the love of everybody in this room. I have no hate. But some of you have pissed me the hell off. Okay? You spent, you threw away money. You lost money. You don't want to take accountability. And as much as I love you, you need to take accountability. This is you. This is all you. And the rest of you who have been here long enough, Mrs. Sullivan, you have been here. Mrs. Ehlers, you are new, but as far as everybody on, on this council, you are the one with some financial background. I looked at your LinkedIn, okay? So I expect more from you than the rest. So, and now that it, apparently you're still vice chair, time for us to have a conversation. I told you you would meet the dragon, and you're about to. Thank you. So that, that concludes hearing of visitors. Agenda item five is a BHS safety update from our Brockton Police Chief, Brenda Perez. Chief. Good evening, school committee members. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today regarding the security of Brockton High. I'm a proud alumni of Brockton High School and the daughter of immigrants and a lifelong resident of Brockton. As the police chief, the safety of our school community is of paramount importance. Over the last few months, my team and I have collaborated closely with the mayor, superintendent of schools, school administrators, school principal McCaskill, school police officers, the district attorney's office, and the city solicitor. We have recognized the many challenges we face and are exploring strategies encompassing prevention and intervention. Tonight, we'll be providing you with a security update on issues we have identified along with some recommendations for the school district. To gain a better understanding, we wanted to take a look at the frequency of calls for service over the last two years, examining both district-wide calls for service and calls specifically for Brockton High School. During the preceding school year, we received approximately 1,100 calls for service for the entire district, with slightly over 80 calls for service for the high school. During this academic year, encompassing the data up until January 31st, the district has had just over 800 calls for service with approximately 40 calls of, to the Brockton High School. Calls for service within Brockton High School encompass a broad spectrum, ranging from alarms to theft to altercations, medical calls, missing persons. Our current trajectory appears consistent with, pre with the previous year. Given the, re the recent occurrences on school premises, it's imperative to uphold open communications across all administrative levels with Brockton Public Schools. And we urge staff to utilize either emergency 911 and the police non-emergency number to report any incident requiring our intervention. As a first issue, we wanted to discuss assessment to bolster security measures effectively. It's important that we adopt a proactive approach by conducting 
comprehensive reviews and assessments at regular intervals, ideally once every three years. In looking at the school safety issues, I found the school district's most current security plan is approximately 10 years old. The Mass Chiefs of Police Association using the guidelines by the Partnership Alliance for Safe to Schools offers a comprehensive guide that just came out October of 2023 on how to achieve a greater level of security in schools. As the initial step, it's recommended to assemble a multidisciplinary team consisting of, the school, of a school district security director as the head, IT specialists, integration experts, administrative personnel, community representatives, fire and, and law enforcement are part of that community representatives. I would like to pass out a copy to all of you so that you can take a look at what that composition looks like and for your review. Once the proposed recommend, once the pro, one proposed recommendation involves engaging a third party entity to conduct a comprehensive evaluation of the existing security infrastructure. And we're happy to hear that Governor, of Governor Healy's grant award that will allow the districts <laughs> the district to start with this process. We recommend that the district hire a school security director to oversee all safety and security planning and bring in all the necessary partners to include fire and police. The second issue that we've encountered is classroom security. The security of classrooms within the high school poses a significant concern. Currently, teachers are able to lock their classrooms, but do not have the ability to unlock, leave in unsecured rooms, unoccupied rooms, unoccupied rooms unsecured, presenting potential risk to the safety of students, the safety of students and staff. Compounding this issue, the circulation of the G submaster keys, some of which are unaccounted for, further compromising school security. Additionally, there have been instances of key distribution to unauthorized individuals, contrary to established protocols. As a short-term measure, we recommend the district establish a policy and protocol to instruct teachers to lock all classrooms when unoccupied, minimizing sec security vulnerabilities. Second, giving floor teachers the responsibility of unlocking classrooms and implementing regular checks to ensure all classrooms are securely locked at all times. As a long-term solution, we recommend the district explore, ex explore comprehensive security options such as rekeying rooms or transitioning to a FOB or a card access system. Implement stringent procedures for key issuance, key turn-in, and management to prevent unauthorized access. Empower key personnel to allocate access based on their job responsibilities, fostering accountability, and bolstering security measures. The third, the third issue we've encountered is access control. There's several risks that have been identified concerning access control within the high school. The absence of a vestibule poses a significant security threat, allowing unauthorized individuals to gain entry. Individuals already uh, inside the building accessing entry point introduce significant vulnerabilities. Access control officers lack adequate training and visibility. Their position in relation to metal detectors, a lack of clarity regarding their roles and responsibilities. Pictures on IDs are not current, leading to inaccuracies or inability in identification. Absence of alarm systems on doors exasperates the risk of breaches going unnoticed. Over-reliance on reactive measures leaves gaps in proactive threat detection and response. Exis existing cameras are primarily utilized in a reactionary manner rather than active monitoring. To address these concerns, we recommend the district implement comprehensive training programs for access control officers to enhance their visibility, ensure clean, clear understanding of responsibilities, and ensure active monitoring of metal detectors. 
Establish a protocol for annual ID picture updates for students, staff, and teachers to maintain accurate identification records. Introduce a pre-processing center or vestibule to prevent unauthorized entry for all. Establish a centralized command center staffed by security personnel to monitor all entrances in real time and deploy the limited resources accordingly, therefore enhancing physical security, operational efficiency, and situational awareness. The fourth issue is personnel training. Inadequate training of personnel has been identified as an issue to address. For this, we recommend that the district perform a thorough review and refine the roles and responsibilities uh, for access officers, security and safety officers, and floor teachers in an effort to boost effectively and clarity in their duties. Enforce stringent vetting procedures alongside comprehensive training protocols for all security personnel. This measure ensures that they are professionally trained to handle their responsibilities. Assess and optimize the deployment strategy of all security personnel to ensure maximum coverage and efficiency across all areas of concern. Brockton Police and Brockton School Police are here to assist and work with the school district, the school committee safety subcommittee, and school security director in any way necessary to ensure the safety of students, teachers, and staff. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Members, members of the committee, any uh, questions for Chief Perez at this time, please? Uh, Ms. Azak, please. I'll start off. Thank you, Chief Perez. Um, Thank you for the presentation. So a lot of the items that you touched base on, we have been asking for those. Um, more training, things like that. Um, some stuff I think, you know, should be discussed in executive session as to how we do things. It is safety, and we really don't want to be putting everything out there um, as to what we're going to be doing as far as doors, keys, things like that. So I believe our, our attorneys here, I believe that does fall under our executive session. So I wasn't aware there was meetings happening as far as you know, we do have a safety, traffic, and transportation subcommittee. This is the first I've heard of meetings happening within the city, within, I'm glad that they were happening, it's just the committee was not aware. I know I wasn't aware, I'm not sure about other members. Um, so we do have a subcommittee and our subcommittee should have known what's going on and we could have worked as a committee to implement some of these um, ideas and some, some, some steps that you're recommend, recommending. I would recommend to just probably discuss, I have a few I, questions, but I'd rather do them in executive session because it is safety and security. Okay. Um, and it's not something we want to put on camera. So if our attorney could probably, we can schedule something. Absolutely. Can, but thank you so much for the presentation. I'm glad that there was meetings. It's just some of us weren't aware of them. But okay. thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Azak. Any other questions for the Chief at this time? Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, please. I said I wasn't going to ask any questions, but when, when you look at the uh, Director of Safety and Security, that's already in our policy that that position exists. I requested that two years ago. Uh, I went on deaf ears. Um, but most of this is m during our uh, subcommittee meetings that we've discussed, this was already brought to the forefront. And I thank you for your, for your work in actually assessing this. Um, you know, thank you to the governor. Yes, it worked. It worked and we brought light to it. It did. And I'm, I'm glad the community stepped up and I'm glad the governor sent us that money, but that money doesn't help us right now. Mm. Because doing an audit, it's gonna take time to hire uh, personnel. The money that she should have sent is the money to, for us to hire security staff. On top of that, hiring the educators into the classroom. But I thank you for this, but I think this discussion needs to be done in executive session because it does uh, involve security <laughs> of, of the district, so. Thank you, thank you Mr. Rodriguez. Any other, Mr. Mr. Gomes, please. Um, just to go off of what they said, also uh, took notes while you're talking. I do appreciate the time you guys put into this, but all of the things that were mentioned, we've already covered. Mm -hmm. Like the ID, um, covering um, access points and so on and so forth. And even the uh, security director position, we've gone over those. So I was looking more forward to, forward to what are we doing about those things. Like, for instance, access control. Do we have more staff to help with that? Or are you guys going to provide more security personnel to come and patrol, things like that. 
I won't ask the specific questions that I have. We can do it in executive session, but uh, majority of those things we've already talked about. Um, I look forward to hearing what we're going to do about those things, if anything. Okay. Well, thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. And staff, when it comes to access control, are under the direction of the superintendent of schools, so they're employees of the school, so he would be better able to answer that question. Any other members have any questions? Chief, I just want to thank you. I, I met with you today and Dr. Cobbs was on a Zoom. One thing I think would be important for the public to know, um, this was not under your watch. You're the new chief. You're first female chief in the history of Brockton, but you're a proud Brocktonian and Brockton high Life's grad. Long. And you tell me that all the time. Um, but when you began your due diligence on this, one thing that uh, came to light was that um, some determinations was made a while ago that SROs, the school resource officers, school police, uh, could only be on the first floor. They wouldn't go to the second floor or third floor, but you've changed that. Could you just express that so that people know that? that thank you, Mayor. That's true. When we um, started this process of looking at you know, safety in schools, uh, it came to light that basically under a previous administration, our school resource officers were not allowed to go on to the second and third floor and were basically restricted at the high school to the first floor. So um, Dr. Cobbs, the mayor, and I, we've discussed this, and that's something that's you know, not acceptable. Our school resource officers are here to basically integrate with our students and become a part of that school community. So that's since changed, and we're happy to hear that. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions? Uh, follow up from Ms. Azak, please. Um, that's so much a, uh, it's just more of a statement. So, under Superintendent Thomas's um, administration, when we had talked about the vestibule, and I believe there's plans, but at the time, I believe the fire fire chief. It didn't pass, and, and that's why it's really important. I know we don't have the money, but it's years out, and I, I believe the new plan with the school, if everything goes well, we will have that vestibule. It will be a safety, because as soon as they scan and go right in, again, there's stuff I don't want to put on camera, but it would, it would make more sense to have that vestibule right in the beginning, right in the front area where administration is, like we have with all our other schools. Um, but I know it was shot down, and it, I know that there's plans out there somewhere, and, and they worked on them years ago. So hopefully one of these days we will have that. But, I mean, it's a great idea. It's just it, it, it didn't move forward. Um, and it was just not too long ago they worked on that, probably within the past six years, yeah, five, six years. The last couple of days they worked on it. We met with an architect. We have a, a, a different plan. It's scaled down from the original one. I think it's doable more pretty quickly. Which makes more sense mm -hmm. given... Mm -hmm. Again, it's stuff that mm -hmm. I feel more comfortable talking about, comf you know, right. with we'll the chief one-on-one. -on -one. Executive session. Right. We also have a new fire chief within the last. Oh, six chief Nardelli, correct. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. We have all these alumni. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's awesome. We do. And I'm available, and my team is available for any conversations, and I'm sure that these conversations are going to be ongoing as as we mm -hmm. move on. So, thank you. All right. Thank you, chief. Thank you. Thank have you. a good night. Thanks. I am going to read uh, agenda item six, but then I'm going to have an attorney, Sarah Spotterfoot, is here tonight, and we have to get a receipt. Um, I'm going to read number six in the record. Uh, executive session, which is Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, superintendent, CFO, deputy CFO. Second matter, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A1, to discuss the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than professional competence of an individual or to discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual, uh, Michael Thomas. Uh, Attorney Spotterford, please. Yes, so tonight we have two executive session matters, one of which, um, the second one, the purpose one matter, uh, Superintendent Thomas has exercised his right to have that in open session. Uh, this first matter, however, is one that would be in executive session. Uh, so we would be adjourning to executive session outside of this room for the first matter, but then returning to open session uh, for the second matter concerning Superintendent Thomas. Any questions on that? Then, like we have to do for executive sessions in the past, I need to entertain a motion at this time to go into executive session, but we will be coming back. Motion, motion to, to go into executive session. Uh, Second. Second. Ms. Azak, followed by Ms. Ehlers. All, 
All in favor? All in favor, kindly raise your hand. Raise your hand. All opposed, okay. raise your hand. Yep. I will need to read the roll now. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Ehlers? Yes. Mr. Gomes? Yes. Ms. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Ms. Azak? Yes. And I'm a yes as well, but we will be coming back. BCA, please don't shut off. We will be coming back, Mike. We're coming back into session at this time. BCA, are we on? Thanks, Mike. Uh, at this time, uh, we are back in a formal session. Attorney Spotterford, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're here tonight under Purpose One to discuss uh, Superintendent Thomas. The reason that we called this meeting tonight, it wasn't a planned action of the committee, but uh, Superintendent Thomas had notified the committee through council that he's well enough to return to work. He did so about a week and a half ago. He stated he was well enough to return to work on the 21st, uh, which was last Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, he previously had informed the committee that he required an extended medical leave, which the committee had granted. It became effective um, the last week of August, and he's been on extended medical leave. He had also previously notified the committee that he intended to retire on March 3rd. Um, he notified council, uh, the committee through council again last week that he was rescinding his retirement notice and was well enough to return to work. The committee had to meet to talk through. <laughs> The, the quorum, please. The, quorum. the committee had to meet to talk through um, Dr. Thomas, Ms. Do Superintendent Thomas's return to work. Uh, so tonight, um, the committee needs to take action if the desire is to have Superintendent Thomas remain out of work. Otherwise, Superintendent Thomas would return to work. Uh, if the desire is to re have Superintendent Thomas remain out of work, I'm advising the committee to place him on paid administrative leave, effective uh, February 21st, uh, so he wouldn't have used his sick time for that period of time since he was well enough to return to work. Uh, this is to preserve the integrity of the ongoing audit and investigation. It's not a disciplinary move. It's not contemplating discipline at this time, as we don't have the results of the audit or the city investigation to rely upon. Uh, so that is my advice that the, um, and it's consistent with how the district and the city and every public employer handles employees who are, have any allegations against them to give, both protect the employee and protect the integrity of the investigation. So that would be my advice that the committee placed uh, Superintendent Thomas on paid administrative leave effective uh, February 21st. Happy to answer any questions. Ms. Ehlers, please. Administrative leave effective February 21st. We can't hear. Second. So, form of a motion. It was motion to approve Superintendent Thomas to go out on paid administrative leave effective February 21st. The motion, made, the second on the motion. motion was made by Mrs. Ehlers. It was properly seconded by Mrs. Sullivan. Uh, all in favor of that motion, kindly raise your hand. Nay. Nay. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Are you shitting me right now? Motherfucker. We have to do we have to we have to do decorum, please. You gotta put a vote. It, 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 it technically doesn't have to be because no one's on Zoom. It technically doesn't have to, but I'll honor that. Uh, there's a motion made. It was properly seconded. I will do a roll call vote on this matter. Mrs. Sullivan. Uh, Mrs. Ehlers. Yes. Mr. Gomes. Yes. Uh, Ms. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Ms. Azak. Yes. And I'm a, ye I'm, a, I'm a yes as well. So that does pass. However, uh, Superintendent Thomas is here. Um, what, just one question, what, what is the uh, scope of discussion before us tonight? Sure, so Superintendent Thomas under open meeting law has the right to respond to, to talk for himself on the deliberations before the committee. So that would just be limited since the committee is not taking any disciplinary action tonight. That would just be limited to the vote of, uh, to put him on uh, paid administrative leave. 
Thank you. Superintendent Thomas, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Can Superintendent we? has the floor. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, committee, I understand. I want to say nice to see you all. Um, um, I understand, you know, what you had to do. It's unfortunate that you pay me all this money and you have me sitting out when you know I can make a difference. Uh, and I also want to say, I also want to say, this is the first time I've spoken in six months. Um, I gave this district 30 years of my life. 30 years. And I put my misguided trust into somebody who I thought was a friend who let an embezzlement rumor go out knowing me and refuse to put it to bed. I would never do that to anybody, especially a friend. Leadership is taking responsibility. I went on TV, I took responsibility. Do your audit, do your personal investigations, please come look at my credit cards, look at my bank accounts, look at whatever you want to look at in Mike Thomas's background, because Mike Thomas never took a dime from the Brockton Public School. And I was made out to be a common thief. Within 48 hours, I went on medical leave. My phone was shut off, my email was shut off, and that was it, thrown to the side. After 30 years of impeccable service, and that's how I was treated. And I don't have any problem with the school committee. You know who I have a problem with. Somebody that I thought was a friend and a colleague didn't have the guts to stand up for somebody he knew for a long time. And you know what? I knew we had a, I know we had a, I know we bought a transportation company, but I didn't think everyone, you'd get in every bus and drive it over me. I really did not think that. The community knows me. And I'm not putting the current administration down. Please, I worked with all of them. I hired most of them. But if Mike Thomas was here, this stuff at the high school, you know would not be happening. Not a chance. And I want to say another thing. The money's the same where it was before. Transportation, special ed, okay? These are costs we could not absorb. And uh, did I overstaff the schools? You're damn right I did. You're damn right I did. And, and I take, and I'm the only one so far who has taken responsibility for that. The only one. And I ask Mr. Clarkson, I ask, with all due respect, Mr. Plant, you guys have a ton of questions. You have two men on leave, Chris Carrere and Aldo Petronio. Last I checked, these guys have had impeccable audits year after year after year. Aldo Petronio was recognized by the state, spoke to the governor, helped Kathy Smith get the SOA through. Now he's in. Attorney Spider for now he's incompetent. Not here tonight. Okay, I'm over. just saying, you need to have them here answering every question Mr. Plant has. That's transparency. That is transparency. Now I'm going to go, but let me tell you one thing. I am extremely dismayed that the public safety building is $34.5 million over budget. <laughs> Mayor, why haven't you... You should have stepped aside like I had to step aside. $34.5 million over budget. And I want to say one thing. Please. This is my Super last thing I want to say. Talking, please. Other than I love you all. Love Mayor, you. I watched you when you went to get the 14 and a half million. 
You said, and it's in the paper, I want to be very blunt, said Mayor Sullivan, the chair of the school committee. This is the city bailing out the school department. The school department is the city. The department and out. chapter 70, chapter 70, since 1993 has bailed out the city. If that's the way the city looks at the school department, we got a lot of problems. But you can keep me on paid administrative leave. I think it's a mistake because I'm ready to come back and you need me back. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So I want. Ladies and gentlemen, please. I want to be. I want to be very clear. I want to be very clear about something. We have currently an ongoing, fair, and uh, impartial external. Yes, external. Yes, it has external investigation. City solicitor Bridges right here is running point. I am nowhere near that. But I will tell you this. I am acting, asking everybody, school employee, city employee, if you are applicable, take the time to be interviewed. I've already started to participate. I'll continue to participate. The other thing is, when they come with their findings and their report, I said this and I'll say it again. That report is going public. We need to figure out what happened. People can finger point all they want. People can finger point all they want. But I also want to be clear of this. You only, you only know what you know. I was not made aware of a fiscal 23 deficit until the date of August 8th, and that's a fact. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All in favor? All opposed? Have a good night. Have a good night.